All right. Good morning, power hitters. My name is Jarrett McAllister. I am your mentor and co-host alongside my main man, Jonathan Brunasso. What's up, player? How are you? Good morning. I'm pumped. It's going to be a great week. Straight up, man. And uh, real quick, it feels good to be back. Feels good to be back, plugged in. As you guys know, I've been uh, gone the past couple of weeks, been moving, uprooting my family from Northern California to Northern Idaho. Well, I'm gonna be, yeah, I'm gonna be pioneering and uh, building a team up here, and uh, super excited. But uh, feel good to be back and plugged in and plugged into the system. As we know, like when you're when you're involved, you hit the trainings, right? You're showing up um that's that's part of the action that it takes to make it happen in this industry um so yeah just feels good man thank you jared congrats on your move thank Look you forward to seeing you build in idaho and plan an event out there with melissa dawson and it's gonna be good so absolutely man and looking forward to this training today yes i've been wanting to do this for a while so let's jump in we'll try to keep it under an hour Got some fancy graphics here, a slide deck that I'll share with the team. Wanted to show you uh, some of the pictures from the Northern California tour that we just finished in Stockton, Vacaville, Sacramento. You see Charles here with some of JC Rangel's team. Uh, I cloned myself. So I have an identical twin brother here named Chris. We met with Zach Haynes, one of Jarrett's leaders and mentors in Northern California. Good guy. Some of the women in power, we have a lot of diversity and some of the most women in this industry. And I'm super proud of that. Rachel McDonald here, our new director of operations, and she helps with pre-sales. And uh, some of Kiara's leaders, Owen in PG&E Northern California territory, one of the best door knockers in NorCal. So moving along, we always like to share some success stories. I'm gonna do a shout out for a, a new gentleman on here. Found me online, came from the financial background, LB. He's hungry, he's ambitious, he wanted to join us. Within days, he linked up in Dallas, Fort Worth with Keenan, an amazing leader in power. They have an appointment, they have more appointments coming. And it's just so cool that we can have people here join our team, have mentors and leaders help them anywhere in this country and work together, close deals, and it's mutually beneficial. So congrats, LB, on your first lead, getting that in. All right. Anyone else would like to share a success story? Recently, someone joined, you got a lead, you joined a BNI, you closed the deal, you had a 20-day install. Feel free to jump off mute and share a story. Real quick, I, I'd like to give a shout out um, to my boy, Phil Romando, who just joined the Power Hitters team. Um, I've been working with Phil for over a decade. He's a very talented, uh, actually a loan originator, real estate agent, and now is uh, looking to jump just head first into power. He's already contacted his list, set up a couple appointments that we're going to close this week. So uh, just shout out to my boy, Phil. Hey, hey. Thank you. <laughs> I have one. Congrats. I want to. Yeah, Lily, you have a big one. What do you got, Lily? Yes, I have, um, I have my team to thank because they've been on a roll. We have Ubaldo, who was in the top uh, mentors and top sales, and he's new to the industry, guys. Never knew about solar. I sold him solar over a year ago, and now he here he is selling a bunch of deals, top 20. So he's like the biggest example. If you guys ever need a mentor in New Jersey, that area, he's amazing, and he speaks Spanish as well. I have um, Krista, who brought Tina on board from another company. Within three days, you guys, she got four leads in. We um, she closed the deal already. Uh, 18.45 kilowatt, three ground mounts. <laughs> so all within three days. And she brought someone onto her team as well. Wow. And then I have Joe Salgo out there who's now selling in Cali as well as New York and all over. So everyone's just closing a bunch of deals and being amazing and making my life super easy. And I look forward to just continuing to grow with the team and helping them build their teams more importantly. 
Boom, mic drop. Solar Lily in the house. Standing uh, and, and, and women in solar. Also, women it's growing. Oh. It's growing, guys. It's big. <laughs> Look at all these women, Michelle Bunch. I told you we got them. All the women here. Um, yeah. Anyone else? Quick share. Hey, Jonathan. Yes. Hi, this is Laura from El Paso. Morning, Laura. Great to have you. Uh, good to have, good to be here. Uh, I just wanted to have a uh, little moment here and, and shout out to JC and Keenan Garcia yesterday for their video. Um, that was such an amazing motivational video that they made or a uh, uh, training yesterday. Mm -hmm. It pumped us girls up here in El Paso. So we went out last night and we knocked on doors and got all our nose out of the way. And some of us got some, a few bills, but uh, we did great. It was all thanks to him. He pumped us up and motivated us. That's thank awesome. You. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Those are two amazing leaders. What's your goal? Like how many no's is your goal? If you achieve a hundred no's, is that successful? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? I'm getting my coffee. Oh, get me a double shot. Uh, like, <laughs> do you have a goal in mind? Like how many no's you want to get? Like, do you, have, do you tell yourself, I want to get 50 no's today? Yes, like um, I, I'm okay with getting 30 no's okay um because i know that the last two homes that like yesterday we got a yeses mm. so we can go and get all these no's and the last ones where we wanted to give up we're getting yeses i love it let's go get some no's today <laughs> <laughs> thank you all right all right one more all right jonathan i i, I could go yeah what's up lewis What's up? What's up? Well, um, it's been it's been quite a successful couple of weeks, <laughs> and um, I wanted to share this one because I think it's worth sharing, especially for you. Uh, I closed my first BNI deal. I've been in, in BNI for four weeks, and I got my first referral, and we were able to help a customer out in North Carolina, actually. Wow! So yes, yeah, with the battery, solar system, and all, and also I know you. Some of you guys saw uh, I saw that I posted an, an install that was under 20 days in Victorville. So that was pretty cool. And, and yeah, we're excited. We're excited for the future. And I know things are only getting better here in power. Love it. Awesome, Lewis. You're an amazing leader, mentor. Our install times are really ramping up. The team's building. It's hot across the country. So great to have each and every one of you. Tons of success stories right now, but let's keep this moving. Jared, thank you as always. And thank you, Lily, and all the other leaders. So today, we have a great training lined up with some updates and Q&A at the end. A friend of mine I was fortunate to meet, thanks to Lorenzo, introduced me to Reggie. He owns a roofing company here in Southern California, extremely knowledgeable. I had him do a couple of my clients' roofs already, and he actually knew one of my clients. They went to high school together, go figure. So great quality roofer, very knowledgeable. He's here to help support this training. Reggie, why don't you tell us a, a little bit about your background and what you do? And you're with Power too, right? Correct, yep, I'm with Power. Um, I've been with Power since the beginning. I was getting the Solar City $250 checks when we started. Wow. Um, it's changed so much since then and just amazing how it keeps getting better and better. You know, every time, every time we have these big meetings, we get more and more... Uh, income and more and more options and pretty excited about the whole roofing deal rolling out for us now um i've got to work with a lot of you guys on here already um and it's it's just been a pleasure um i've been doing roofing as a kid you know with my father we've third generation roofing company now wow. um cover most of california southern california pretty much from uh pretty much palmdale all the way down to san diego we cover most of riverside san bernardino counties and and uh, uh, I'm excited to be here. I thank you, Jonathan, for having me here and uh, be able to share my, my knowledge with uh, all you wonderful people. Yeah, thanks, Reggie. We'll kind of tag team this together. I'll give my two cents as a salesperson and Reggie can lend some technical expertise as well. So let me go ahead and keep this slide deck going. All right, and like I said, feel free to type in any questions in the chat box to you guys. The roofing really does matter, right? Going to the house, looking up at the roof, knowing what you're looking at, knowing if there's adders and costs involved, if they need a new roof. 
being able to speak confidently like, oh, you have shingle or you have this presidential shingle on the left here um, or your ridge caps look good. You know, being knowledgeable and speaking to it is just going to help us look better and be more confident and close more deals. So it's really important to me that we all understand roofing, especially the mentors, you can lean on their experience. And I'm sure Reggie will be a resource as well. So when it comes to roofing, we're gonna go through a few different categories and things that to know for solar. I'll start off, asphalt shingle is probably the most common on the bottom right that we'll run into. My understanding is GAF and Owens Corning are the two largest with some of the best warranties. It's important to know if there's one layer of shingle or two layers of shingle, sometimes even three layers of shingle. We can't install solar if there's more than two levels. And really there should only be one layer when possible. And then I'll just call out something called wood shake or cedar shake. On the right here, you could see these wood pieces on the roofing and the bottom left here, you can see this wood shake as well. That is not acceptable. That does have to be removed. Generally the entire house, cities want one roofing material to be uniform, right? They don't want shingles on one half and shake on another half. So when it comes to certain roof types like wood shake, you want to re-roof the entire house to a shingle. And oftentimes with wood shake, there might not be a good plywood underneath or skip sheathing or different things like this. So you may need new plywood, which is very freaking costly right now. And the last thing I have before Reggie adds, sometimes people put shingles right on the bottom right here, they put shingles right on top of the wood shake. That is not okay. That cannot have solar installed on it. You need to have the shingle removed, the shake removed, new plywood, new paper, and new shingles, and then install solar. Um, anything to add here, Reggie, on these two companies and what to look out for? Oh, the nice thing about GAF and Owens Corning is they're, they do, like Jonathan said, they offer the best warranties. When you get certified with them, um, you can give your customers up to 50-year warranty. So it's important for you guys to learn that when you're doing your sales so you can let them know, hey, we're giving you a 30-year warranty on your solar system, you know, through Solar Insure. And the roofing company, if they're certified, can give you a 50-year warranty on the roof. So it really helps with sales, especially if you're competing with other companies. So that's one of the important things about dealing with a certified company. Um, layers are very important. I've done some quote for some of you guys um, on here and other consultants that we've done quotes where there's only one layer. I was told there was one layer. Then we go out and do our site server and it turns out to be two layers, three layers, or there needs plywood or something like that. So it's important to learn, learn those things, at least the basics, so you can get an idea what your customers um, have currently have so we can know if we can go over the existing roof or remove or whatever we need to do. That's pretty much all I got on this one. On the left here, is this what you call a presidential shingle? Like it looks fancy? Yeah, it's a presidential shingle. And what it is, it's a thicker shingle than what you have down on the bottom right. Got it. And this is a ridge cap on the top, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Do those deteriorate faster than the actual roof planes themselves for some reason? They do. And the reason is when those first came out, and you'll start to see this less as we move forward in the future, there was a company that came out that designed them and uh, they ended up going out of business. So a lot of the manufacturers didn't make that kind of ridge cap. So we were combining, you know, a GAF shingle with that ridge glass roof um, ridge. And the ridges just weren't lasting as long. They were only doing 15 years as opposed right. to a shingle that was doing 25, 30 years. So a lot of times you're going to run into where those have to be replaced. And the way I describe shingles, uh, ladies and gentlemen, like when the shingles have movement, they've been moved or displaced. When the granules are falling off of the shingles, like when it rains, you'll notice on your concrete, you'll see the uh, granules falling off. You'll notice that 
There's fiberglass or frays around the edges. And you'll notice that in the sun, it looks shiny. There's a sheen to it. So those are all great ways to describe shingles that are towards the end of its life, uh, if you're describing it. And then someone asked Reggie, uh, so the roofing Gaff and Owens, I don't know which one you use, is it a 50 year parts labor and roof or what is, what is the the? Warranty? Yeah, they give us what they call a extended warranty on it. So it covers our labor and it covers uh, shingles and everything. Yeah. Nice. Um, and just to point out here, if the solar is going on one side of the roof and we're penetrating that side of the roof, that's where power or solar insures 30 year roof warranty takes over. Correct. Right? Yes. The roofing material and the roofer does not cover that side. They would cover the other side of the roof, though. An important thing to mention about the warranties, too, that's only a 50 year only applies if we go down to the wood, if every single layer is removed now. So if we go over an existing roof, we're not allowed to give a 50 year warranty on it. Got it. Makes sense. Yeah. So it's always recommended to remove the existing shingles and then check check the paper, uh, plywood, check the paper and put new shingles, right? So one layer. Right. All right, and that's usually a little bit extra labor and, and cost to do that, but it's definitely the, the right thing to do and the roof will last longer. All right, moving on. Next up, we have concrete tile. A lot of people mistaken this for clay. They look at it and they think it's concrete. And guys, this will this will change market specific. You know, we see a lot of different roofs here in Southern California, Florida, Texas. You might only see a different type, so just be mindful. Each market is different. In Idaho, they have straw huts. I think, right, Jarrett? Uh, just kidding. <laughs> uh, so concrete tile. There's different types. There's a W that we'll see in just a minute. There's an S which I believe is this one, this big one right here. And then there's the flat type, which is the top right. So generally a standard concrete tile is about eight to nine pounds or heavier. Anything under that is what's considered lightweight. It's fragile and requires additional roofing work that we'll show you here in just a second. So concrete tile, obviously these are flat pieces. And on the bottom, left here, uh, this looks like an S to me. But one thing I wanna point out, you guys notice that these, these little nail holes along the ridge caps here. So whenever you see nail holes, usually most of the time it's an indicator that it's concrete tile. If it doesn't have those nail holes, it might be a clay or lightweight. So it's very important. I, I'll show you in just a second. From Google Street View, you can almost see these nail holes. Um, and then one last thing here, when it comes to concrete tile, there's what's called an underlayment or the paper underneath. And that, you know, I generally say has about a 40 year shelf life. There's different pounds to that paper, like a 40 year pound I, I've heard is, is good quality. But every now and then we're going to have to check that paper. If that house has been there 40 years and they never replaced the paper under the tiles, the surveyor will go out, check it out, maybe do a nail test, maybe do a bend test. If it's cracking, fragile, and breaks apart easily, we probably shouldn't drill 40 holes for solar. We probably should replace that paper which requires Reggie to come out, remove all the tiles, put down new paper, and then put back the tiles. Anything to add on some of this stuff, Reg? Yeah, the, the, the important thing with tile is, you know, as a visual inspection, you can walk around the bottom of the house and just look up in the eaves and you'll see stains or watermarks or cracks in the paint. Mm -hmm. And that's a good indicator that it's probably gonna need new underlayment. So whenever I walk up to a tile roof, that's one of the first things that I look at. I'll check the eaves as I walk up to the front door to meet the customer. I'll just pop my head up and look up. And you can normally tell, especially in the valleyways where two roofs come together. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have the cursor, but if you can just point what the valleys are, I don't know if everybody knows that. Um, but that valleyway there at the very bottom of that valleyway, just by looking up, you can tell if, it, if, if there's any water 
getting through that paper. Um, most of the homes here in California that I'm working on in, in uh, you know, Diamond Bar area, Yorba Linda area here, they're older track homes built in the 80s and most of them haven't had to be roofs done. Um, so a lot of those will need, we need to be at what we call lift instead or a relay. Yep. Like Jonathan said, we pull up the tile, put all new underlayment down and reset all the tile. Yeah. That's the less expensive way to go when it comes to a tile roof. So lift, you know, fix the paper and relay just so everyone got that. And so Reggie, you said this is the valley. Mm -hmm. uh, these would be like ridge those gaps are, or easy. Those are called the hips. The ones that go, you know, up and down on an angle are called hips. And then the peaks are called ridges, ridge caps. Interesting. So valleys, hips, and peaks or ridge caps. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Uh, is the cost to replace the paper about the same as replacing the whole roof? No, it'll cut your cost in about probably about 50%. Uh, Michelle's asking, how much does the lift and relay cost approximately? I know it's per square. Um, it, most people will calculate it per square foot. Um, about 350 a square foot is what's average, depending on the type of tile and how complicated the house is. Um, a lot of times when we you know, for instance, the picture that's on the bottom left here, when we pull those ridge caps off, they put so much cement on there, yeah. they will probably lose most of the ridge caps and most of the pieces that are underneath the ridge caps. Um, so it's hard to say. Um, it just depends on, on the particular property and how, it's, how it was originally roofed. It's like an 1,800 square foot, 2,000 square foot, two-story home. I mean, you're probably talking, what, 14 grand? Who knows? I know that's a rough. I mean, I mean, on a relay, they start as low as maybe eleven thousand, all the way up to twenty-five thousand, depending on the size of the roof. Right. Uh, but your standard track home, um, you're probably going to be spending around fifteen thousand. And with lift and relays, everyone, like if you're just doing one mounting plane, one roof plane, you can lift and relay just that section to save on costs. Uh, so that is an option as well. And uh, yeah, Jason, thank you for throwing that out there. Jason Reedy is um, on the team and does roofing in Texas. So I appreciate that. Michael, just replacing the paper is not nearly as costly as replacing the tile, right? That, yeah, that's, that's correct. Yeah. Definitely correct. And then someone said there were ridge vents for comp shingle. Are there ridge vents for tile? Ridge vents. We will usually use a dormer vent or other types of vents for tile. Gotcha. Uh, Fidel asked this, and thank you. I was going to add this into the training today. Can the homeowner receive a 26% tax credit for the gross cost of the roof too? I have a tax preparer once tell me the roof doesn't count towards the 26%. So I'll just give you my advice on that. Obviously, we are not CPAs. Consult your CPA, consult the professional. In my experience, the tax credit can apply to the roofing materials underneath the solar array. If you're redoing your entire roof and it's 10 grand, but you're only putting solar on half the house, those five grand of costs could qualify for the 26% federal tax credit. So that's a little bit more black and white. It's the roofing materials, qualified property costs, in order to get the tax credit. But if it's one invoice, if we're packaging it into one loan, one invoice, it's just solar and it's just 50 grand, you know, I'll let you read between the lines. If they want to claim that and it's one payment, one invoice, whatever that looks like, that's up to them. It truly is up to them to consult their CPA and read the tax code and put in whatever roofing amount they want into the tax credit. So that's my advice. Um, other advantage of less cost for this where you don't need new tiles is fitting into caps for the loans also as well as ease of tax credit. I don't really understand that. And then Raphael, we'll cover the new, um, the new roofing procedures towards the end. So let's keep going. That was concrete tile. And like I mentioned, there's nail holes, right? Those bottom right nail holes. If you go to Google Street View, this is my friend's house. Um, in Diamond Bar here. It's very subtle. If you can see where my cursor is, 
you can see that there's nail holes along this ridge right here, very subtle. So that to me says it's concrete tile. Even more subtle is this W shape concrete. You can see this line here going up. So that is what I call W shape. And we know it's concrete likely because of the nail holes. As long as this is eight or nine pounds, uh, which it most likely is in this track neighborhood home, we put solar on this house about five, six years ago. And on the bottom left here, this is likely clay tile. Clay tile is often multicolor when you look at it from satellite. So I couldn't get a street view on, the, on this house. I'm probably gonna do a ground mount on this bad boy because this roof is clay tile, very fragile, lots of different areas. It's just easier to do the ground. But I wanted to point out that multicolor usually indicates a clay tile. Anything else on these ones, Reg? Um, I was about to mention the same thing, multicolor. A lot of the concrete, you can see that the bottom right picture has slightly variations in color, but mm. a lot of the tile is like really defined different colors, you know? Right. And on, on a lot of these tile ones, and we'll, I think we have another slide coming up, but we, when we do these, we have to do a comp underlay or a, a comp picture frame on the tiles. Yep. All right. Yeah. Um, let's see, a, pl a plane needs a tile lift and reset. Would it be more economical to lift tile, add asphalt comp, then backfill a tile after? It's cheaper to do a lift and relay than it is to do a picture frame, but we'll, we'll get into the picture frame right now, but it's, it is cheaper, right? Just to do a lift and relay. <clears throat> um, okay, so metal roofs, there are different types of metal roofs, standing seam, is the bottom right here. It's usually indicated by a nice large line that pops up. And what we're able to do is install a clamp. I forget the name of it, but there's a special clamp that clamps onto both sides and allows us to install the solar on a standing seam metal roof. There's also a corrugated metal, kind of like a barn or a shed. There's metal shingles and there's stone coated metal. It's not too often here, but like in California, on the right, some people might mistake in this for shingles or tiles, but oftentimes it's actually metal. It looks almost like a really hard aluminum foil if you look really closely. And uh, so there are different types of metal. Metal roofs always have adders if we're going to be installing solar. And Reggie, correct me if I'm wrong, but like the metal shingles or the stone coated metal, you got to make sure you have some good material underneath it, like plywood or maybe a, is this skip sheathing? But you have we have to be concerned on what's underneath it because we may have to reinforce it if we're going to put solar on that plane. And also a big thing on the metal shingles or stone coated. It was really common practice to cover a wood roof with those. Um, so those would be directly. Uh, you see how you have that wood batten system on the right. They would build a batten system over the wood shingles and actually just install the metal roof on top of it. So a lot of times, if we have to put solar on it, we got to remove all that, install new plywood, and get a uh, comp shingle put down, and then the metal again. So it's it's a pretty lengthy pro uh, process for that. Gotcha. This isn't too common for most of us. The metal roofs are kind of a one-off, but uh, you know, work with us and take some pictures and we'll, we can see if the surveyor can go ahead and work with that. Does That's what we have in North Idaho, Jonathan, just, just so you understand. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah, we have the uh, standing seam metal roofs for the snow when it slides right off. Yeah. You upgraded from the straw. Awesome. From the straw to the metal. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. It's very, <laughs> good. very good. Um, someone asked, Victor, does the clamp penetrate the metal roof? So my understanding on the standing seam metal roof on the bottom right here is that the clamps do not actually penetrate the roof itself. They actually just clamp onto the, the raised parts of the roof. Yeah, there's, there's no penetrations at all on this. Right. In the solar. Yeah. 
All right. So one of the things when it comes to metal roofs or the wood shake under shingles, I always recommend, like Reggie said, when you walk up to the house, just look up. Um, on, the, on the right here is it probably in the attic, but you notice it kind of looks like there's lots of pieces of square wood. It doesn't really look like one giant piece of nice plywood, like the bottom left. Likely, and it looks kind of stained in different colors. Likely that is wood shake, the cedar shake, right? And they probably put the shingle on top of it. If you see shingles on the outside, but you look up in the garage, you look up in the attic, or sometimes when you just go to the front of the house and you look right up at the overhang, you can see some of these little wood pieces. So this is an indication that there's wood cedar shake Again, look up in the garage, look up in the attic, or walk up to the house and look up. And what, what we generally like is a nice, just plywood, a nice, clean, uniform, no leaks, large piece, same color of plywood. That'll be the best. Um, and Reggie, what is skip, skip sheathing? The, the picture on the right is skip sheathing. So there's a, a you know, you got the one, it's a one by six. And then they space it out, so that's called a skip. So they skip sheet it. It's very common on on wood roofs or or any wood shake cedar. Um, sometimes in between those planks that are going across, you'll see a black underlayment, which would be tar paper or felt paper. Um, so sometimes when you look, you may see black stripes in between those. Um, and that's usually you can pick that up in the garage or attic just by. Um, I ask my customers when I go. As soon as I know it has more than one roof, I ask to take a look to see if it has plywood. Um, and that's my gauge. I'll climb in an attic or, or you know, open the attic up and shine a light up there or walk in the garage. And I'll be able to tell if it needs um, any plywood or not. Got it. Very good. All right. So and, and any solar system requires plywood. You can't do anything on that space sheeting. Oh, that's good to know. Um, OK, so on the bottom right here, uh, Lorenzo had a deal about a year ago now. This was actually a flat roof, and this is what's called tar and gravel. So you can see it almost looks like little stones or rocks on top of it. Um, a lot of companies don't work with this, but our installers are great, and they actually made this, this happen. So tar and gravel, and there's also flat roofs. So on the top right here, these two pictures, um, I always explain this as a rolled torch down comp it is the flat roof that's most common. With flat roofs, there's also what's called membranes or TPO membranes or an elastomeric coating. I just throw out these words to sound smart. I don't really know what, <laughs> what they all entail and that's where Reggie comes into play. But that's, that's a little bit of my knowledge on flat roofs. And last thing here, is if you Google chem curb, that is generally the install uh, racking that we prefer for flat mount roofs. So if you notice here, it is like double, triple sealed, commercial grade sealant goes onto the roof. And there's, this is a commercial project on the left, but there's a stanchion usually that allows the solar to be at a tilt. Tilting it towards the south or the west, a couple degrees will maximize the production. When it's flat, it actually does not maximize the production as well, but it's sometimes more aesthetically pleasing. What you got on flat roofs to teach us, Reggie? Um, just, just one thing to be careful of. On these gravel roofs, a lot of times, it's very important that they use some kind of chem link or, or chem curb on it to make sure that they don't have any leaks. Um, the, the thing about gravel roofs, it's really difficult to tell how old it really is uh, because it's been covered by gravel for so long. Um, so it's, it's it, I've already done about three or four installs with on gravel roofs also on residential. And um, I make sure I'm there when the guys go out and do that part just because I'm a roofer, you know, uh, but but they've done a good job. Every single one of them, I just pretty much just watched and didn't have to. Uh, I, I'm, I'm having a lot of faith in a lot of our installers. Um, the chem curves are like the biggest thing, you know, they, they came out with those like in the late nineties and 
and nothing's changed with them. They've worked so they're successful and, and there's never been any issues with them if they're done properly. Um, flat roofs, a lot of times you can tell how bad they are just by looking at them. I mean, if you climb up on a roof and you can see any black markings or any ripples or anything like that, it's going to be time for a new roof. And that's what you want to let your customer know. Um, it's very easy to tell on the, the rolled comp. I heard someone said they don't really love the idea of flat rolled comp because water could pool um, in a section. And I said, I, I haven't experienced that, but can you educate us on if there is a flat rolled torch down comp, does water pool or how do you? You, will, you will in some places if the construction was not done properly or if they've had multiple roofs on there for years and it caused it to sag, you will get some pooling. But there's a lot of materials out there that you can cover a rolled comp roof with now. It'll eliminate any damage that ponding water does. Uh, Michael asks, is chem curb anchor included with the general adder and solo? Yes, if you do the flat roof adder and solo, that will cover the additional costs for the chem curb. Solar Lily asked you, Reggie, for flat roofs, do you re-roof also like, I don't even know how to say that, uh, Gateco Flex or what do you use? Yeah, we can we can re-roof with a Gecko Flex or another silicone product. Um, we can do that to cover a flat roof. Uh, it's a little less expensive than having to rip everything off. It's more like a restoration. So we can definitely do that. And besides the torch down comp or tar and gravel, um, sometimes there's foam roofs or TPO or membrane, or you notice like a white elastomeric coating. Anything to know if we ever see those types? Uh, they're, they're TPO, there's a TPO and PVC. It almost looks like a nanoleum up on a roof. Um, those are very easy to tie into. No big deal on those. Um, if you go with a elastomeric coating, um, depending on how good they did it and how long it's been on there, you might want to put a fresh coat of it before you do any solar on it. It just depends what, what the roof looks like. Like I said, if there's ripples or cracks or things like that, you might want to get that addressed. Melissa asks, what's preferred for flat roof? Peel and stick or rolled torch down? I personally prefer torch down. Me personally, we don't do a lot of peel and stick. Um, I'm more, I feel more comfortable with a, with a torch down. Yeah, I've never even heard of peel and stick. <clears throat> it's very similar to a torch down, except you don't heat it up. You kind of just mm, peel stick, and stick it to each other, you know? <laughs> And you roll the seams basically. And I just don't have a lot of confidence in it. I, and it's, it's been successful with a lot of roofers. I just feel more comfortable, you know, using the heat and torch. All right, moving on here, a couple more. This is a patio. If you notice on the right here, it's a well-built patio. It's got good beams, good support, good strength, and it was built to code. Important things to know if you're gonna try to put solar on it. You can see very subtly the chem curb and a little stanchion with a little tilt in the backyard here. So we put some solar successfully on this patio. And the reason why we didn't do this roof here behind us, <clears throat> I don't know if you can tell what it is, Reggie, but it's some sort of lightweight, very fragile, possibly um, like a, this kind of Kel shake material here on the right, which isn't even allowed is my understanding, but that's why we went with patios. And those are some of the things to look out for when you do patios. Um, anything the, you know on the lightweight or the, this Cal shake stuff, it's not even allowed anymore, right? Well, most of the companies went out of business. It wasn't successful here in California. Earthquakes and stuff, they would just crumble. Right. Um, we became certified to install the Cal shake when it first came out back in like the 80s. And um, after installing them, we had a major earthquake and we lost like five or six homes. Basically, the insurance companies had a, we had to re-roof them basically and the manufacturer went out of business. Right. So, but they were, they were, it was a big part of the market because they were fire retardant and they had a bunch of other great qualities. But uh, in that roof up on top, that looks like a hardy shake. It's very similar material as the one underneath. It's just a little bit thinner. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, those you can't even, it's difficult to even replace a piece of that tile. So it's very rare you see solar put on anything like that. And some cities don't let you do a picture frame comp out, which we'll explain right now, but some cities, they don't, they don't really want that. If the whole roof is hardy shake or cal shake, they don't, they don't let you just shingle picture frame, picture frame 
one area is my understanding, but each jurisdiction is different. Yeah. Um, all right. And then you added us some clay tile pictures here. Looks very fragile. We do not see the nail holes on the ridge cap. And then I think, is this concrete on the left? That's concrete on the left. I just, you can see the thickness of that concrete tile. Uh, typically a concrete tile is about an inch thick where clay is about half an inch thick. So sometimes just by looking at the thickness of the tile, you can distinguish a difference. And what's it called when there's concrete in between clay tile? Is that like double barreled or something? There's just different, there's different kinds. What they do is, is uh, to give it that old Spanish style look, we call it a full, a full set tile. And it's basically every piece is pretty much has cement on it. Mm. It's a full cement, they call it. Gotcha. All right, clay tile on the right here, we see the multicolor and concrete tile on the left. I know one thing you told me, Reggie, on these concrete tile, if it's lightweight, under eight or nine pounds, you'll often see a white paint strip on the inside of, of the- It'll be on the top, kind of by where the nail hole is. Oh, okay. All the way across the top. Gotcha. Not that way, the other way. Oh, oh that's right, across yeah, the wall. Yeah. yeah, okay. So if a customer has one laying around or takes one off and it has a white stripe, it could be lightweight, under eight or nine pounds, is gonna require additional roofing work to make that happen. Same thing with the clay tile. Clay tile will require additional roofing work. Yeah, absolutely. So when it comes to lightweight tile, clay tile, there's something called a comp out where you take composition shingle, you comp it out. Some people call it recessed. You will need to lift and relay and then pitcher frame is, is a common term for it. It's necessary to do for clay or lightweight if we're gonna have guys up there working, stepping around, installing solar and racking, we cannot do it on fragile tile, plain and simple. So there is a cost to this. On the left, you could see the clay tile. It's removed down to the plywood. They install new paper, put down a composition shingle in that entire roofing plane, install the solar and backfill the tiles up around the solar system, giving it a sunken look, watertight seal. It's extra work, but in states like California where utilities are so expensive, it still makes sense to do this work to get your solar system. And you do these, right, Reggie? Yes, and, and, and that's only done on the side where there's gonna be solar panels also. Let's look at a few more pictures here. On the left, a very lightweight tile in Pomona, California, half of the house. We removed all the tiles, put the comp shingle, a brown color to match the tiles, put the solar, and then the tiles will be put back up against the system. Same thing here, bottom left. Uh, I, I think this was Paul Leone's or somebody, but flat roof. We did um, the stanchions, the chem curb here. And on the sides of the house is where the clay tile is at. So this roofing plane on the right, if you notice, will have the clay tile put back around it. And on the right here in Covina, a giant system I did like two years ago, clay tile. Again, notice the edge here, everyone. You do not see the nail holes. And it's a thinner tile, like Reggie said. So it's a giveaway for clay. And this is right after the install with the composition shingle put down, and then we'll put the tile back around it. And those, uh, those are kind of custom pricing too, right, Reggie? Like we have to ask power for a quote or email you for a quote, and um, those aren't cheap. Yeah, no, it gets pretty pricey to do a picture frame, especially if it's... Uh one of the stone coated ones because of the plywood adders for that. Right. All right. So ground mount is an option. If there's enough space on the property, if there's enough setbacks from the property line and there's things to consider with this, there's a ground mount adder in solo. You also wanna make sure you have enough trenching, dirt or concrete to get back to the electrical panel. 
they will put them at a tilt generally, like this nice picture on the right here. And some things to consider, like they had the dirt here, but they ended up putting like the black weed covering and putting some, um, some wood down as well or plants. So you kind of limit the dust that comes up. And obviously they keep a hose nearby. They rinse it off every now and then too. So this is a great ground mount option that we can do. And often a big system like this may require a sub panel, electrical work, a main panel upgrade. This house, little mini mansion, I actually had to go to a 400 amp main panel. They already had a 200 amp. So you essentially have to add another 200 amp. It was like about $3,000 of electrical work to do this ground mount. So those are always options as well. Talking on loans, this is always changing, but right now our loan limits for Loan Pal is $7 a watt solar and or roofing. Sunlight Financial and Sonova are a little bit lower at $6 a watt. So for example, if your solar system is 10 kilowatts, your total loan amount can only be 70K with Loan Pal. Maybe the roof is 30K and maybe the solar is 40K. Some ways to get around this, if this is not high enough, the customer can do a cash down payment of five grand or 10 grand and finance the rest. If you increase the interest rate, you lower the dealer fee, you can get more money into the project that way. Adding a few extra solar panels is another way to get a higher amount allowed to be financed. So there's a few creative ways here, but these are the current loan limits. Work with a mentor if, if this isn't making sense and don't worry about it, but Loan Pal and Good Leap are good. I mistyped here, Good Leap, Loan Pal, and also Sunlight Financial, our friend Tony Jimenez, they are going higher. They are having home improvement loans coming very soon in a couple months. So we will be getting uh, higher loan limits to finance more roofing very soon. But right now we are at $7 a watt with Loan Pal is probably my recommendation because that's one of the higher amounts allowed. Anything on loans or cash down payments or change orders, Reggie, you wanna mention? The, the big thing um, on Loan Pal that I love is they have that no dealer fee option and it's helped me save a bunch of deals when I need to put a new roof on a property. Um, it just takes away that dollar and change adder. Uh, Say that, that one have. more time. Loan Pal has what? Loan Pal has a no dealer fee loan. Oh, right. Yeah, so that has helped me save a lot of roof deals or for other, even other consultants when they didn't have enough money to include the roof. Uh, it drops the amount that uh, the dealer fee is to zero, basically. It's like same as cash almost. Correct, yeah. Sunlight has one of those as well. And that's a good point. Find a loan that has very little to no dealer fee. Use some of that money towards the roofing costs. And obviously if you have a battery, these limits go way higher. If you do have a battery, it goes up to like $10 a watt. Yeah, those are just a little bit tougher when you're working with a smaller system. Yep. But I've come to find <clears throat> the price per watt can go up pretty high, pretty quick. Uh, so like on a five or a six KW, it, it's difficult to include a roof on it. So hopefully those new products come out soon. Yep. Good point there. All right. Well, we're going to stick around for some Q&A here in just a minute, but a huge thank you to Reggie. If you don't mind, put your, if you're open to it, put your contact info in there. And let me go ahead and grab the, the roofing link for you. Reggie, can people email you if they have roofing questions or want to get quotes or? Sure. Yeah, definitely. Sorry, I'm typing right now, guys. <laughs> All good. And I'll, in a minute, I'll just share. Um, there is a new California roofing procedure coming out to power, guys. So stay tuned for that. It's California pilot program. We'll get some training on that coming soon. But for now, Email Reggie if you're in SoCal. If you're not in SoCal, go ahead and use this roofing questionnaire form to get a quote in your area. And 
just so you know, our roofing manager, she is amazing. Her name is Christina. Am I sending this to the right area? Let me see. All right, there's the form and there is Christina. So reach out to Reggie for Southern California. His uh, email and phone is above there. Other roofing requests or bids needed, fill out the re-roof questionnaire form or reach out to Christina and you'll be uh, pleasantly surprised and happy with her service. All right, so a couple last announcements here. Uh, next week, everybody, we have Aparna. She's with Give Power. She did a training for us on referrals. She is absolutely amazing. The best energy and referral partner I've ever seen. We're going to be announcing uh, a little partnership with this team and Give Power. We're going to give away to make some donations, have some slide decks to include when we do our presentations. And we're going to set up a goal where we can get 10 people to go build a solar water farm in, you know, a country outside of the U.S. that gives clean water to 30,000 people. So stay tuned for that training next week. And really, you know, if it's up to you, if you do have space to make a donation per install or a small monthly, or if these things speak to you and you want to get behind it and tell your homeowners about it. I just encourage you ingrain it in the DNA of the team of business. Giving back shouldn't be an afterthought. It should be an initial thought from the beginning. So if, if that aligns with you, I, I highly encourage you to get behind something that you care about and, and let people know. And a partner and give power will be one of those things. So after that, July 6th, I uh, need to fill that training on Tuesday. And July 13th, we have Spencer from Enphase. He had to push it back a little bit, but he'll be doing some live role play and battery training for us. And we'll have more trainings to come. If you have ideas, then let me know so we can continue to give you guys good training. By the way, we're giving away a Tesla. A Model Y Tesla is the top prize, and $15,000 cash is the second prize. There's 20 prizes, and then there's going to be a lottery for five additional prizes. You just have to sell one deal between now and the end of August to qualify to be in this contest. Go to championships.power.live for more information on the contest. It started like June 14th, and it runs through the end of August, so no other company is doing this really, really cool sales contest that we have for everybody. Now, I just want to point out, uh, there's a WeFunder. If you do want to invest in power, I don't have all the answers and details and facts, but what I do want to say, there's not a press release yet, but the COO of Sunrun, a past COO who made millions helping them go public and launch their stock has invested heavily in power, seven figures. He used to oversee and manage the financials of solar companies across the country. He's a best friend of Rick Joseph for 10 years. They used to work together. And thanks to Rick, he's now on our board of directors. I can't express to you like how impactful this is. Everyone at any solar company, all the big shots are gonna turn their head and be like, oh, I should pay attention to this company. He is going to bring over one or two of his friends at the top solar companies in the industry. And there may be a big shot there tonight in San Diego as well. So I, I, I am all in. I'm going to be investing. I think we'll likely go IPO in 24 months, but who knows? But if you do want a little piece of the pie, there's an opportunity to get in on the WeFunder right now. All right, last two things here, the California tour, we finished Northern California. So we have Southern California, likely the biggest, best events Cali has seen will be tonight in San Diego, Thursday in Corona, and Saturday is a training, 10 to four in Anaheim, excuse me, Anaheim. Lunch will be served on Saturday's training. JC Rangel will be teaching, Charles will be teaching, myself, We'll see which other leaders want to train as well on 
homeowner presentation, solar basics, electricity, lead gen. Um, and that'll be an amazing training on Saturday. I'm hoping to even have a 20, 30 minute guided breath work. Uh, if you've never done that, it's, it's truly amazing. So if you can make it June 26th, fly out here if you need to, drive out if you need to, get a discounted room at the Sheraton. Love to see you on Saturday. And here are those flyers again, San Diego tonight. Go to cleanenergy.live to register for all of these events. Thursday, Corona. This is gonna be a heavy real estate and solar presentation. It's at the Association of Realtors in Corona, Thursday night, and then Saturday, like I said, Anaheim. And for those of you like who are not sure about these events, just come, bring a guest, bring yourself, run a Facebook ad to attract sales professionals to these events, put them on Facebook. Like these events are here to help you build your business, build your passive income, build your lead gen, ambassadors, consultants. Uh, so really, I would encourage you, if you like, get behind them. It's only going to help build your business and attend and network and meet a lot of the leaders in the company and meet mentors. And it's, it's really amazing. So try to come to these events if you can. And that is all we have for you. So I'll end this recording in just a minute. But huge thank you to Reggie. You're the man. I appreciate your expertise, you being here today, you supporting the team, helping us with roofs. So thank you so much, my friend. No, it's my pleasure, man. It was awesome to be able to do this and see so many people and get to meet new people here. Thanks for having me. All right. Thank you so much.